9.7 kilometers long, traveling under downtown KL. With a three kilometer highway in the middle. A combination that has never been attempted before. David Parks is the chief engineer for the Smart Tunnel. The man responsible for making the impossible possible. We were working on a project that nobody had ever done before. Nobody had ever designed it, no one had ever built it either, so we were definitely venturing into the unknown, really. The bulk of the tunnel will channel flood water under the city, while the middle section will carry traffic. Most of the time, these parts will be separate. But when a major flood threatens, the road will be evacuated and the entire tunnel opened up to flood water. Gus Clados, AKA the Mole, is brought in to manage the tunnel project. Normal people do a tunnel and then disappear and do something else, something more clever. Only the crazy ones stay in the business. Gus has spent 35 years working underground. There isn't anyone better than the Mole to tackle a project as groundbreaking as this. But Gus's experience is about to be challenged by a problem millions of years in the making. Just below the city is a layer of waterlogged silt on top of a dangerous network of limestone cavities. It's called cast, and it's a tunneler's worst nightmare. When I realized that uh, this, this is it, and I will have to build a tunnel here, as I said, I started to read about it. And the more I read, the more frightened I became. Karstic limestone forms when rainwater eats away at limestone bedrock. It starts as just a few ridges, but over millions of years, the limestone gets eroded away until it becomes the worst case scenario. People asked me, how comes that there is not that much karstic tunneling literature? I, my answer was that because clever people avoid building tunnels in karst. And if they do, they don't write about it because they don't like to publish horror stories. The danger zone lies at the interface between the rock and the soil. When construction passes from one to the other, the soil loses pressure and collapses causing a cave-in in the tunnel below and creating a giant sinkhole in the city above. But Gus has a secret weapon that could save the day. We thought that we have a good chance in using a certain type of tunnel boring machine, namely the most complicated machine money can buy. Tunnel boring machines, called TBMs, are standard issue in the tunneling industry but most only dig and are small. Gus's custom-built TBM is four stories high and a staggering 20 stories long. It cuts rock, secures unstable soil and builds the tunnel walls. The tunnel excavation begins in the heart of the city. 30 meters down inside a giant man-made crater. Here, the only evidence of the TBM is the large hole it leaves in its wake. The TBM's powerful cutting head slices the rock from the face in front of the machine. But the secret weapon lies at the other end. Massive pipes that run the length of the tunnel connect to a factory where they make a magic mud. It's called bentonite slurry and it's the key to tunneling through cast. The slurry is a mixture of bentonite clay and water. Unlike regular liquid, it becomes thicker and stronger when pressure is applied. 
It's this that allows the KL tunneling team to defy the odds. They pump the bentonite slurry to the head of the TBM through a pressure chamber that thickens the slurry, then into the excavation face. This thickened bentonite acts as a plug, reinforcing the fragile soil and avoiding collapse. The final step, to build the tunnel walls as the excavation moves forward. The wall segments are moved into place by the ultimate remote control vehicle. It's called a vacuum erector, and it lifts the 10-ton segments using suction alone. Remarkable teamwork then positions each of the 50,000 segments into place. Giant bolts hold them fast. And grout completes the job. The grout fills the gap behind the wall and protects the tunnel from the crushing pressure of the city above. On a good day, the team can install almost 30 segments an hour. But when things go wrong, the results can be disastrous. Twenty meters below the surface of Kuala Lumpur, progress on the smart tunnel has come to a standstill. The pipe carrying the bentonite slurry has burst. The result? What they have been trying to avoid has happened. Right beside the highway. The sudden increasing uh, slurry pressure actually blew a hole on the surface and we had a nice big sinkhole at that particular area. Miraculously, the sinkhole misses the actual highway. No one is killed. But below the surface, the soil has engulfed the TBM. They must secure the site before tunneling can resume. The same grout used to seal the tunnel is injected into the sinkhole. This man-made rock creates a false work face and the team are back in action. But above ground, a different type of sinkhole threatens the entire project. The final line of defense requires storing 10 million cubic meters of storm water until the floods recede. The engineers plan to use abandoned mining ponds scattered around the city. But when they start excavating, they discover a fatal flaw. The old ponds are filled with highly porous silt. As water filled the ponds, it would seep into the silt, creating fracture lines. Then, when the water was released, these fracture lines would collapse. If they are to avoid this disaster and save the project, the engineers must find a way to reinforce the ponds. There's the TUV station there. Yeah. Okay. A team of earth stabilizing experts have a revolutionary product that could solve the problem. But it's a little unorthodox. We had to overcome people's perceptions that your sheet pile 
doesn't look like a standard sheet pile, I'm not sure that I like it. Sheet piles are the industry standard for reinforcing an unstable site. Traditional sheet piles are made by molding hot steel. It's a one shape fits most process. But Kevin and the boys at the Earth Support Company approach things from a different angle. Their sheet piles combine Metalwork 101. So this is a very nice weld. With the ancient art of origami. A sheet of raw steel is as flimsy as a piece of paper. Incapable of holding itself up, let alone millions of cubic tons of water-soaked soil. But fold it in just the right way, and you turn unusable 